So today we're very excited to talk to Dr. Gladys Teitelman from SUNY Downstate. She'll be talking about the human beta cell, whether it is the victim or instigator of type 1 diabetes development. And as a brief side note, I will be hosting today. Unfortunately, Dr. Wesley had a family emergency. Um, my name is Neha Majetti. I'm an intern at the Sugar Science and an incoming MD-PhD candidate starting this July. Now I'm just going to give a brief bio about Dr. Teitelman before I hand it off to her. Dr. Gladys Teitelman is a professor in the Department of Cell Biology at SUNY Downstate uh, Health Science University. Professor Teitelman earned her master's degree at the University of Buenos Aires, Argentina, and her PhD at the University of Pennsylvania. After her postdoctoral fellowships at Cornell and Columbia, Dr. Teitelman joined the Cell Biology Department at Downstate. Um, Dr. Teitelman's research activities are in isolate cell biology, so thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Teitelman. Um, I'm very excited to hear about your work. So I am going to, the PowerPoint is almost downloaded and I'll share my screen when it is and you can take it away then. And, okay. I will try my best to point at what you're referring to, but you can take it away. Okay, <laughs> okay. thank you. Thank you, Neha. Uh, okay, so today we are going to uh, sort of describe um, the little story of how uh, I uh, we were working in my lab uh, to um, elucidate uh, what are the, the factors that determine beta cell death in uh, type 1 diabetes. Uh, what is known is that it's a disease that develops, uh, the insulin cells die, the beta cells die. Uh, the cause of death was um, general belief uh, to be due to the immune attack, that the immune attack was causing beta cell death. And um, recent findings are questioning that um, statement, that hypothesis, and that is what um, I'm going to be uh, talking today. Uh, next one. Uh, this is from uh, the, the trial, uh, the diabetes trial net, and <clears throat> describes essentially that uh, the pathway to development of type one diabetes. Initially, there is an immune activation. Uh, that um, I, uh, the uh, donors or the, the patients start to produce uh, autoantibodies uh, to beta cell antigens. Uh, then there is an immune response in which the immune cells attack uh, the islets, it's believed to attack the islets. And then uh, there is the beginning of uh, the uh, the uh, effects, essentially, uh, the metabolic uh, abnormalities that develop at different stages until the, the, the uh, process, the, uh, uh, the disease is diagnosed. Um, initially, uh, at stage one, there are two autoantibodies, and actually many of the patients can develop uh, type 1 diabetes at that stage, or that uh, can increase the number of autoantibodies. Uh, the autoantibodies uh, that are being produced and found in the circulation are those indicated in the drawing on the left, and those are products of the beta cells. Uh, one is obviously insulin. Uh, it's a zinc transporter, uh, the, uh, the uh, GAT65, uh, and uh, those are different uh, uh, molecules that participate in um, in uh, beta cell function, and uh, they are, in general they appear sequentially. Uh, GAD uh, uh, GAD sixty five the autoantibody uh, is called GADA is uh, usually the first one to be detected. Uh, people that have only one antibody, the first one uh, may or may not progress to uh, the full uh, disease. Uh, there is a difference uh, between uh, mouse, uh, that's what I'm going to focus on now, uh, the difference between mouse and humans in the um, development of the disease. 
uh, we um, when once it was uh, determined that type one diabetes was uh, a result of beta cell death. Uh, years ago, uh, there was a search for animal models to study the disease, and uh, the typical animal model is the non obese diabetic mice. And as you can see in the um, uh, picture on the left, uh, this is an eyelid and all the blue, the cells, the insulin cells are in blue, and this is a normal eyelid. On the other hand, the one on the, the picture, the one on the right, is with uh, end-stage insulitis, and uh, the, there are very few uh, beta cells left, and uh, most of the uh, uh, cells of the immune system have invaded the eyelid and um, inducing uh, the the, res the, beta, the death response in the cells. And essentially on the right in mice, it is believed what has been studied is that the insulin cells, uh, the cytotoxic T cells of the immune system um, become activated and in turn activate another immune cells and those other immune cells are the ones that are responsible for uh, beta cell death. Uh, this is not an aspect that um, I'm an expert. Uh, I'm an expert most on uh, beta cell health. In the next slide, I, 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 before we move, uh, what I want to point out is that in NOD mice, insulitis affects 100% of um, of mouse, uh, the beta cells of the eyelids. All eyelids are affected. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in humans, uh, we have uh, the inflamed human eyelid. In brown, uh, you can see the location of uh, the uh, cells of the immune system. And this, what is typical in here is that the uh, rarely penetrate the eyelid itself. They remain mostly on the surface of the eyelid, and uh, there is a um, uh, basement membrane that surrounds the eyelid and uh, prevents, uh, in a way, the, the entrance of the cells of the immune system. Um, insulitis is present in a uh, large number of, of patients, especially uh, during the initial stages of the disease, but it's more rare uh, that in mice, uh, it affects only 25% of the eyelids uh, that contain insulin, insulin cells. Uh, the, this is in contrast to the findings in mice. Uh, the current belief of the cause of type 1 diabetes in humans, you have on the left, uh, it sort of illustrates uh, the exocrine tissue on, on the left, and uh, you have in green uh, the immune cells, and in the center you have an eyelid. And in those, uh, those immune cells are already uh, carrying uh, the um, uh, recognition markers of beta cell antigens. Uh, those are in red but uh, the eyelid itself uh, remains uh, invisible for the, um, the immune cells. So the beta cells uh, are not attacked. On the, on the type one diabetes donor, or more on the right, uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, beta, the eyelid starts producing molecules that make them visible to the uh, immune cells. And um, the, that is the way it's initiated uh, with chemokines that are then released and uh, uh, induce uh, the death of, of uh, the beta cells. Uh, notably, uh, other cell types also are, um, are becoming identified by, uh, by molecules but they are not uh, attacked by the immune cells. Uh, so it's only the beta cells that remain attacked. So the question remains is what happens in the beta cells of the eyelid that makes uh, the eyelid visible to the immune system? And the current idea is that there are intrinsic events 
uh, that leads to cytokine pro uh, production, uh, the uh, uh, production of molecules, the MHC uh, upregulation uh, that makes the islet visible uh, to the autoreactive uh, T cells in the periphery. So uh, the, uh, my question uh, that what we have investigating is what are, are the nature of the intrinsic events? And in particular, whether those intrinsic events can be detected in the pre-diabetic stage. So uh, in the next slide, uh, the, our approach uh, was um, to test whether uh, type one diabetes affects the expression of an insulin synthesizing enzyme. This is a, a diagram of uh, the insulin synthesis pathway. And in here uh, on the top, you have a pre-pro insulin uh, that has uh, its a, a, a peptide, it is a polypeptide that is being, um, it goes into the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum and uh, it's then uh, cleaved into um, uh, pro-insulin. Uh, you have the pathways on the right, pro-insulin, and uh, this pro-insulin is then processed by uh, two different uh, pro-protein, what's called pro-protein convertase. On the left, one is PC2, pro-protein convertase 2, and on the right is pro-protein convertase 1, I was discovered by two different laboratories, so it's called protein convertase one or three. Uh, recent studies have indicated that is uh, that uh, those pro convertases are the ones that transform uh, pro insulin into. If you go down in the pathway, uh, it uh, uh, converts pro insulin into insulin and C peptide. Uh, recent studies have demonstrated that uh, pro protein convertase 1, 3 is the main enzyme, enzyme in human islets uh, to uh, activate and uh, to be involved in these uh, processes. Uh, during uh, type 1 diabetes, uh, there is abnormal pro insulin processing, and one of the first symptoms that is known is that the level of uh, circulation of mature insulin or the C peptide goes down, and the level of pro insulin in circulation goes up, and that it means that the ratio of insulin to, to pro insulin uh, goes down. Uh, in our first finding, in analyzing the expression of PC13 in, uh, uh, in mice, uh, you can see the mouse, uh, the islet on the left is a mouse islet, stay for PC13. And all the beta cells that, that look green uh, are, have the same level of the enzyme. In the islet on the right, in here, the, it, this is a human islet, a normal human islet that has been stained for PC13 and insulin. Uh, and the uh, blue uh, and um, light uh, 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 light uh, blue cells are cells that have both uh, markers, uh, PC13 and insulin. Uh, the cells that have just green are all the other islet cell type, and that are somatostatin cells that uh, have uh, similar levels of the enzyme. But as you can see in the islet on the right, uh, there is differences in the level of um, of uh, of PC13. Uh, that that's the reason that you see uh, more whitish or less whitish in in each of the beta cells. I have to um, highlight the fact that uh, all the work that I'm going to present is uh, the uh, tissues, uh, human tissue, have been provided by uh, the network of pancreatic organ donors. Uh, why is heterogeneity of PC13 important? Uh, studies done in other enzymes uh, that are involved in metabolism uh, indicate that reflects complex regulation of enzyme activity 
and it is common in enzymes involved in uh, metabolic processes. Uh, glucokinase is one that comes to mind in which there is also variations in the level of expression is, uh, of the enzyme and there is a very fine regulation that it has been shown is a very fine regulation of enzyme activity. Uh, then we ask the question whether the heterogeneity of PC13 correlates with that of the precursor, that means proinsulin, and the mature end, uh, hormone that is insulin. And in the next slide, uh, we discovered that human islets, in contrast to mouse islets, human islets contain three beta cell types. The one in the left has PC13 but it is pro-insulin negative. If you see in the uh, picture shown in D on top, D, D, lower, lower, that one, lower that those cells that are indicated with an arrowhead have, uh, they lack pro-insulin and they have a PC13 and insulin. In the, uh, in the middle, this uh, islet indicated in the middle, uh, you have the, this is a, a second uh, beta cell type that uh, doesn't have PC13, but is pro-insulin positive. And you can see in the different uh, pictures, uh, in here you have pro-insulin on the upper left, then you have insulin on the upper right and on the lower left, this is the area in which uh, the cells lack, um, it's a ghost essentially of cells that lack um, PC13, uh, but uh, contain pro-insulin and insulin. Finally, the third cell type, which is the most common cell type, has both PC13 pro-insulin and insulin, but with variable levels of PC13. And uh, so these are the three cell types that are common in uh, mature human islets. I should point out that in islets of uh, newborns, uh, normal newborns, uh, the islets look like those of a mouse. Uh, in which the levels of PC13 are the same in all the beta cells. And with maturity, uh, they become uh, heterogeneous. Uh, just uh, we analyze uh, on um, uh, a different thickness, uh, serial sections. And uh, you can see from in the bottom line, from the left to the right, it's um, uh, this, uh, the two cells that are indicated with an arrow, uh, those are, uh, they uh, lack PC13 uh, but have pro-insulin throughout the thickness of the section. So we believe that the phenotypes that we are showing are indeed um, uh, are the real uh, phenotypes of those cells. So uh, we postulated that the heterogeneity of physical expression reflects different stages of insulin synthesis. Uh, one in which is insulin low, then increases the level uh, of, uh, of, uh, 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 of processing of the pro-insulin and you have the three cell types. And then it goes to a, a next stage in which becomes pro-insulin negative in which Hopefully, and uh, we are going to uh, start studying that, uh, hope, uh, we, we can demonstrate that at that stage, there is increased um, transcription of the molecule that uh, would produce more of the pro-insulin precursor. So we asked whether the expression of PC13 is affected in type one diabetes. And uh, okay, in type one diabetes, uh, on uh, the uh, picture A, uh, you can see that's a control islet, and uh, you see uh, in here uh, PC13 is green, proinsulin is purple, and uh, insulin is blue. So you see that the cells have different levels of PC13. On the uh, graph in the picture uh, in B, uh, that is the, the donor number. Those are the two donors on uh, type 1 diabetes, uh, are one, the one in the middle and on the right. 
uh, all the cells in B have very high levels of, um, of the enzyme. And so all the cells appear uh, as ceruleus, the color ceruleus, it's, it's a light blue, uh, but with similar levels. And on the one on the right, uh, in donor number 6250, uh, all the beta cells you can see have uh, barely have uh, some of them, uh, only uh, a little bit of, um, of uh, the enzyme in light blue in a cell on the bottom, but mostly the enzyme is uh, gone. So uh, the, uh, there is a loss of PC13 heterogeneity uh, arriving uh, when uh, the donors reach type 1 diabetes. And uh, next one, uh, this um, I just want to show we um, uh, examined uh, eight uh, uh, with an autoantibody, eight donors autoantibody positive, some with one autoantibody, some with two autoantibodies. And then the, la the bottom four uh, are the uh, four type one diabetes that we examined. And though all of those are adults, they are not, uh, we haven't um, uh, completed the, the uh, examination of uh, the younger cohort, which appears to be different. Uh, what we found then, we went to look at uh, the uh, donors that were auto antibody and found that the defects in PC13 expression precedes diagnosis. And uh, in some cases, you see uh, the uh, islets that are abnormal are inter intermixed with islets that are normal. In this case, uh, the uh, normal islet is uh, it's shown in A, B, C, and D. D is a triple label. And uh, the abnormal islets is F to H, and H is a triple label. And you can see in H that uh, all uh, the beta cells have similar levels of PC13, while uh, the, in D, the islet in D has uh, uh, variations of heterogeneity in, um, in the expression of the enzyme. Uh, this uh, alternation of normal and abnormal could be either in the same uh, uh, section of pancreas or, as I showed um, uh, in the next slide, in different uh, regions of the pancreas. In here, uh, we have a normal islet in A to D, uh, which is a heterogeneous uh, expression of PC13 an abnormal islet in a different region of the pancreas. Um, and uh, so there is a mixture between normal and abnormal that can be in the, the same on different regions of the pancreas. Uh, in the next slide, uh, when uh, we analyze, we did the ratio of autoantibody positive control of uh, PC13. PB is pancreas body, PT is pancreas tail. And uh, because we examined uh, the different regions. And as you can see in this graph, they were um, distributed either as low PC13 or as high PC13 with the same uh, profile that the ones that are in light gray in the graph that are found in type 1 diabetes. So there is uh, what we suppose is that there is an alteration in the structure of the enzyme uh, that it shows as uh, uh, by immunostochemistry as very low or, or very high. And that is appearing gradually, uh, that the deficit is appearing gradually in uh, during development of the disease. Uh, this means that the heterogeneity of PC13 expression is a biomarker of human beta cell health and this loss coincide, uh, coincides with initial stages of type 1 diabetes. So in the next slide, uh, what we think is uh, that uh, we postulate that it is heterogeneity, the loss of heterogeneity is gradual, and there are two pathological routes. Uh, initially, as you can see in the early abnormal, there is a mixture in the top one of uh, normal and all uh, 
islets with beta cell high, or in the lower one, all uh, normal islets of beta of uh, PC13 low. And then uh, we arrived to the uh, 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 with the, the findings that we have in type one diabetes. Uh, we also found um, a decreased uh, beta cell number in uh, uh, autoantibody positive donors. Uh, in you have uh, uh, in the left a normal islet uh, which is uh, highly populated with cells with different levels of of the enzyme, and everybody has uh, the, uh, the hormone and the precursor. On the right is an autoantibody positive. Uh, that uh, it's depleted essentially of uh, many beta cells. And uh, this has been found uh, in several uh, autoantibody positive, uh, the pancreas of autoantibody positive donors. And in the next slide, so this finding indicate that beta cell defects in our view, uh, and presumably beta cell death, first, you have the defective beta cells that somehow in the process, during the process and the, the, the function developed, then uh, activate the immune cell attack. And then the immune, this immune cells then uh, are going to destroy uh, the population of beta cells. And in our future studies, in the next slide, uh, we um, are going to uh, seek to determine whether all the islet effects develop gradually, affecting only a subset of islets, and whether uh, the, the affected islets express also abnormal PC13. And the ultimate goal is what try to identify who, what could be the cause of simultaneous appearance of those effects in the same islet. And I want to finish by thank you the donor family for allowing this new unique opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just exit out. So um, thank you so much for that talk. Um, it was really clear and very awesome to see all those pictures. Um, I would like to open up for questions. You can unmute yourself or raise your hand or add any questions into the chat. Um, uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, Dr. Glaze, did you check if there is um, any difference? Uh, means how, uh, if there is any difference in the immune attack of the islets which have high pro, pre -pro insulin or PC1, sorry, PC13? Uh, no, in that in that is very hard to do in human islets, uh, because the uh, immune landscape essentially um, is very scarce. So um, I, uh, I I as I said, I'm not an immunologist, but I was told by uh, the people that provide me with the the tissues that they are immunologists that said that um, this uh, is going to be difficult to determine because of the scarcity of the immune activation uh, of the immune cells. Um, there has been uh, actually tried to get a consensus of one when to uh, define um, uh, uh, insulitis. Uh, an islet with insulitis, and uh, because uh, the number of immune cells is so low that they have decided that um, it has to be over 15 immune cells. But as I said, they I haven't done the study. I somehow uh, I was suggested that um, in um, it's. Uh, they are very rare. Thank you. I have one more question. Um, is regarding um the in difference in the PC one three level in two patients. Were there any difference in their geno uh, genotype, like whether they are pre one of them previous was more genotype? Oh, I see. Yeah, 
That I don't know. That I don't know. I didn't uh, to see. Uh, yeah, I I didn't look into that aspect. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? I can ask one question. Um, what do you think are the most important biomarkers for tracking endotype development and um, identifying patients that are best suited for clinical trials? Well, uh, the there has to be a, a, a latest, a late paper, a recent paper. Um, has described the presence of endotypes uh, that are in children uh, younger than seven and are and older than 13 uh, is considered adults and uh, younger than 13 is the young uh, endotype. And uh, I'm collaborating with somebody uh, who is, um, analyzing the relationship between uh, expression of PC13 and uh, the alteration in the endotype uh, that occurs, the change in endotype that occurs with age. Uh, I should say that um, the, as I said before, PC13 is homogeneous and apparently it remains we have, this is uh, very preliminary studies, remains homogeneous uh, later on um, uh, when they become diabetic, but we have to uh, to analyze that. And the other part of your question was? Um, what do you think are best for identifying patients that are best suited for clinical trials? Oh, I, I, that, I'm not a clinician. Okay, That's... <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Um, and then I guess one other question, because you the title of your talk, whether beta cell is the instigator or the victim, that goes back to that initial work by Botazzo and at, and then was revisited in 2011 with um, Atkinson et al.'s paper with this seminal question of whether the beta cell is the instigator or the victim. Mm -hmm. um, and it's clearly a question that's continued to be talked about for years. Um, so what is your perspective on why it's taken so long to tease out to the, um, the answer to this question? And how do you think development of biomarkers like PC13 can get to that answer faster? Well, I think that um, the, my own personal opinion is that uh, the use of the mouse models provided some answers about uh, how uh, the immune cells attack the beta cells, but has been a little bit detrimental to the understanding of what happens in humans. And uh, I, the development of, uh, of uh, the tissue banks, uh, such as NPOD, uh, allows the scientists to see, uh, to study uh, more the disease in, in humans, that is, um, it, that is going to make a, a, great, a great change. Uh, so um, with regards to biomarkers, I mean, I'm, as I said, I'm not, uh, I'm focusing mostly on the beta cells and uh, how uh, the alterations that I see in the beta cells can or cannot agree with alterations in the other islet cell types. Uh, for instance, it is known that at the time that I see alterations in uh, PC13, alpha cells uh, lose um, the, uh, there's an alteration in alpha cells in which the cells, uh, they don't have the glucagon response, uh, 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 an important, uh, response uh, to prevent hyperglycemia. So, um, and that occurs in uh, people that has only one autoantibody. So uh, I'm, as I, I, my interest is just to analyze uh, the islet effects 
uh, and um, I am not an expert on biomarkers or the clinical aspect, so I cannot comment on that. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I guess one last question, unless others have questions. Um, are you collaborating with other groups to bring this, this discovery forward, um, like to clinic, for example? And what are future directions of this project? Are you looking to hire more postdocs or other researchers to further? Develop? Yeah, I'm. I'm collaborating. Actually, there, as I mentioned before, I'm, I have a collaboration with somebody working on endotypes, uh, which I'm. I'm very interested. And uh, another collab possible collaboration is uh, that we are talking is to study the effects of pro-insulin processing in um, in uh, beta cells of type 1 diabetes, which I think that they are different from the effects of pro-insulin processing in, uh, from, in type 2 diabetes. So uh, that we have ongoing uh, collaborations and um, we'll see. I mean, it's yeah. exciting and... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely very, sounds very yeah. exciting, yeah. Okay, so I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, thank you again, Dr. Tedelman. Okay, this was thank an amazing you. talk. Um, we can't wait to see where this goes. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Thank you, Neha. Bye.